holiday in Jerusalem. How may I help you? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Chewing the Fat. I am your host, Big Rom. Thank you so much for tuning in, downloading the podcast wherever you're listening. I certainly do appreciate that. Thank you to the folks that have bought me a coffee at ChewingTheFatBR.com. I definitely appreciate your financial support and the folks that are following the podcast as well on social media. That always helps more folks find us. Uh, And if you feel like writing a review or giving us a five-star rating on wherever you're listening to the podcast, I appreciate that too. I appreciate my guests as well. I have known my next guest for probably at least 15, almost going on probably 20 years now uh, since I came back to Augusta from Birmingham. Uh, He was one of the first faces that I saw as I got back into theater here in Augusta. Please welcome Les Reagan. How are you, Rob? I'm good, Les. How are you doing, sir? Great. So good to see you, my friend. It's good to see you, too, even though we see each other every every Monday. Every right Monday night. That's right. <laughs> Don't be late. Seven o'clock. That's right. <laughs> uh, as uh, we are in rehearsals for the uh, Tabs uh, Christmas or holiday extravaganza. Um, so uh, unless I have to get together along with the, f- is it 47 other voices right now? 51. 51. It fluctuates. So, it does. So it fluctuates. It does. So 51 other voices they'll be performing coming up on December 1st at First Baptist of Augusta. Um, You can find out more at tabsaugusta.com. Get your tickets for sure. Um, And we'll talk more about tabs. But as I said, when I I first moved back into Augusta, I wanted to get back into theater. It was always a passion of mine when I was in school. And uh, the one place that everybody says, well, you got to go to the Augusta Players. Augusta Players is a place to be. Augusta Players is going to, you know... That's where you're going to be able to find a chance to do something. And um, my first show with the players was, I, I think, I don't think I could have got set up any better, really, for for the show that I got. Uh, it was Jekyll and Hyde, and Richard Justice uh, was directing that. Uh, and I just met so many amazing, talented people in that show that have become lifelong friends at, at this time. Um, but that's where I started and that's where I was introduced to, to Les. Now, Les, are you native to Augusta though? I am not. Conyers, Georgia is okay. my home. I okay. have been in Augusta since 1988. Actually, the hotel business brought me here. Oh, wow. Not my music life, but the hotel life brought me here, mm-hmm. um, which I did for about 43 years before I Finally retired four to five years ago. Yeah, retired then to start your own kind of passion project and really follow your heart. I think I retired to go to work. (laughs) (laughs) I bet it's a lot more work now than than what it was you were doing. doing. But Um, I feel like it's more rewarding personally, though, as well. It's such a passion, so it's not work at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what was, what was life like growing up in Conyers for a little less Reagan, uh, had you always had this penchant for music and this passion? I have. Um, my mother was a musician. Mm-hmm. She was a phenomenal contralto that sang all over the Atlanta area, and she was a school teacher. Mm-hmm. I don't remember her as a school teacher because she stopped singing when she started having uh, children, or I start, stopped teaching when she started having children. Mm-hmm. Um, but I started piano lessons at the age of six on mm-hmm. August 31st, 1962 was my first piano lesson. So I've been playing for 61 plus years now. Wow. And um, I was really given a talent. The good Lord blessed me with with a talent um, early on. And I've never thought I would do anything else, Mm. ever. All, All I ever planned all the way through school was to be a concert pianist. And... I do think I might have had the talent, Mm -hmm. but I found out when I got to college that I didn't have the drive Mm. to be the the pianist. Mm -hmm. Um, So I decided to change the voice. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Became a singer. Yeah. And so where did you go to, where did you go to college at? Um, My undergraduate is at Birmingham Southern. Okay. Um, You mentioned earlier about 
spending some time over in Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Um, I found a wonderful college at Birmingham Southern in 1978, graduate with a vocal performance degree. Wow. Wow. Loved Birmingham. What? Yeah. Birmingham is a great town. I, I still love that town. Um, what was, was it, uh, you know, when you, you start talking about music and there's, you know, music is music and pizza, if you don't understand it, uh, was there, was it a big shift for you to go from piano to voice? I mean, it's a different instrument. You're going from <clears throat> that external instrument to that internal instrument. Um, not really. Um, I, I never stopped piano. Mm. I just, my change of what I really kind of wanted to do as far as a, a career, um, I knew music would always be a part you mm-hmm. know, of my life. And I'd had a lot of dance training also as mm. as a child um, and had already been doing lots of theater work. And I mm. thought, well, I can play, I can accompany uh, on the piano singers, I can um, dance and shows, well, let's be a triple threat. Let's get some, the, the, the singing in there, which yeah. I really didn't get an opportunity growing up singing because they stuck me at a piano. Right. I started accompanying choirs when I was in the sixth grade. So I never got that opportunity. They said, no, 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 we need you over playing the piano. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I decided to make the change. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I know that. Especially if you you grew up in church, because that's where like you know that's where you get to sing in a choir is in church, right. or you know, and if the piano players are fewer and further between than the you know <laughs> than the choir members, even though you've got you know Ethel in the corner that's squeaking and squawking, yes, but no many of them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but be able to you know <clears throat> not be able to follow that passion, but still be able to keep music alive in your life. I think that's, I think that's amazing. And was musical theater, was that always part of, you know, you said you did theater and stuff like that. Was musical theater always a part of it? Mostly musical theater. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I did my first show um, in my 10th grade year and it was a show, which I absolutely still love. It's called the boyfriend. It was a Mm. twenties, roaring twenties musical um, lots of Charleston type of dancing in it. Mm-hmm. And in the show with me, also in the chorus, I was not a lead, uh, it was in the chorus, was this really young girl, um, very short girl named Holly Hunter, mm. who I grew up with, who now, of course, has an Academy Award right. and, and, and all, but she was from Conyers as well. Wow. And um, we, so I could always say that I, I you know, Holly started with me. Right. We, we started together <laughs> right. doing theater work. Yeah. Well, now we see where I am compared to where she is. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, you know, but lives have different trajectories. Th- and, they do. And, yeah. you know, and you mentioned not having necessarily the drive for being that concert <clears throat> pianist, that thing. You know, that that's part of it, too. You know, I, yeah. I, I think of um, people like uh, Alice Dykes. And to be able to pick up from North Augusta, South Carolina, right. and move to New York, okay. uh, I, I think she's she has a phenomenal voice. I think she has the drive to do whatever she wants, and to, to follow her on on. She uh, had a great voice. Yeah. As a little girl, mm-hmm. she played fan when the year that I directed music directed a Christmas uh, carol mm-hmm. with, with, with the Augusta Blairs. She was young fan, mm-hmm. you know, ten year old, and when she came in and auditioned, Debbie Ballas and I were like, "Who is that? Yeah. Where, where did she? Come where from? she come from?" <laughs> and uh, I mean, she was just marvelous. And so, I mean, and to us, that was the beginning of mm-hmm. uh, of knowing her. And she's she is wonderful. Yeah, and I've heard her many many times. Yeah, many times. But but she has that drive. She's in New York. She's trying to make the things happen. You know, uh, it is funny to see that she. Did work for a while as a waitress at a place. I think she's working at a, a cat like cafe right now. But you do she, what you got to do. Do what you got to do so that you have the time to be able to do the other the right. other things. Um, but yeah, I mean that that type of stuff does change your trajectory. Um, and then so what you said earlier that the hotel business <laughs> brought you back, or not brought you back, but brought you to Augusta. Brought me here. Um, so how do you go from? Music to hotels. Well, um, I graduated from Birmingham Southern 
And I really wanted to stay in Birmingham and study with my voice teacher mm -hmm. instead of coming back to uh, the Atlanta area. Um, so I, I had to go around and apply, and I just applied at all different kind of places. Yeah. And a hotel happened to be one of the places that I applied, and they called me. Mm -hmm. And two days after graduation, I started working on the front desk of a hotel. And 43 years later, I said, I'm done. Yeah. It's time to, <laughs> to move on. Right. You know, customer service has been wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but it's time to move on. Yeah. You know? and, and I think I actually, it was, it was a wonderful career. It really, really was. Um, I love people. I loved um, providing service when, when I was um, big came in, into management and all, which was very quickly, mm -hmm. and then continued on up, up, up the ladder. And as a general manager, uh, instilling in, in the staff that we're there for one thing, and that's to make people happy and, mm -hmm. and, and to, to, to do that. I also looked at the hotel business as show business. Mm. That I would, would tell the staff all the time that the front desk or a dining room or the banquet hall, those were main stages and we were the actors and who came in the front door was the audience. Mm. And that's how I would teach. Mm. And, and it worked, yeah. you know, most of the time, you know, that way that we were always on um, we could never not be, quote unquote, on. Yeah. I, I would have yeah, a I sign that. that hung behind the front desk that said, you're on next, is your act together, mm. before mm. they walked out to go to, go to work. Yeah. Um, th those were just important things to me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, would we get hit by things from, from guests? Yes. Mm. And there is a saying and I probably w might get some phone calls after this. <laughs> but there, there is a saying that, you know, the customer's always right. Mm. I believe that probably 95, 96, 97%. Mm. The other side of that is until I can prove them wrong, mm. which hardly ever happened. But I always left room to, to go, no, that part of it is it, it, not right. Mm -hmm. Now, that sort of counteracts what I was saying. I still believe that customers are right and that we are there to take care of their needs mm -hmm. and that type of thing. It was an excellent business. I got out right before COVID hit. Yeah. I can't imagine what it's like to be in the hotel business since COVID. Wow. I yeah. just, um, that actually scares me. Yeah. 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 Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, I... I, I have heard that it be working in customer service in several mm -hmm. jobs in my life before, uh, you know, the, the customer is always right. I think the full quote is comes from, uh, Selfridge who opens Selfridges in London. And the full quote is the customer is always, always right in terms of style. It was meant like when the customer comes into the department store, whatever they think looks good on them is what looks good on them. True. But it doesn't mean that they, just because they say you should give me a free, you know, a free cookie when I check in. Well, I, actually, I guess there are places well, that get free at one cookies. one of the hotel companies that I worked for, <laughs> yes, we did have to give them a free cookie. Or as many as they wanted, actually. <laughs> it's like, I need more cookies. Uh, they were but, good. <laughs> I think I've had, I, I believe had some rehearsals that we had at that particular hotel. Yeah. I, I probably had some cookies myself. Yeah. Um, but I, I would guess, because it's not like you dropped music for 40 years to go work in a hotel oh, and then, not and then at all. all of a sudden five years ago picked it right back nope. up so i assume it afforded you opportunities and opportunities to at least scheduling wise to be able to still live in your passion i still continued shows i still was in some shows i still music directed shows all of that time whether i was a general manager or a front office manager or a rooms division manager or wherever i worked um i scheduled being in a show or auditioning for a show mm -hmm. to be in around a time that I knew I could make it work. Mm -hmm. I, I knew as a general manager, I was on call 24 hours, seven days a week, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. vacation or not. Right. You're, that's, that's the job that, that you take. Mm -hmm. um, but I also had very good bosses that allowed me that opportunity 
um, to do that. Now, if there was some instance that would happen, I might have to call um, the director of the theater rehearsal and said, I got a major situation, I'll be late, or I might not make it tonight. And mm -hmm. luckily, that very seldom ever happened. Mm -hmm. But I continued music. I continued um, singing in places. I continued being a church musician mm -hmm. uh, on Wednesday nights and Sundays because most of, uh, during that time, most of our uh, theatrical rehearsals did not happen on a Wednesday night because mm -hmm. a lot of people were involved in church choirs and, right. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it was just, it worked easier to not have. Yeah. You know, th those rehearsals. So that was a very positive thing for me as a musical director. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, I never, ever, ever stopped, yeah. you know, and don't ever plan until it's time to burn me up or <laughs> throw me in the ground. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> do you have a, do you have a, do you have a favorite show? Well, you mentioned The, the Boyfriend. That was the first. That was the first one. But do you have like a, a we'll, we'll do, we'll do a range. Do you have uh -huh. a favorite show that you've, performed in a favorite show you've uh musical directed and a show that's on the bucket list that you would either want to be in or do the music for um i guess the f my favorite show i'm gonna have to say that i have two favorites that i've been in mm -hmm. and i am gonna have to mention them both okay. man of la mancha i played the padre mm twice once was right after college in my, in my hometown and then the other one was in 2006 with the augusta opera mm. when when we did the show i was fortunate to get to play that again um it took me a long time before i would ever think i would do that show again because i never wanted to do the role again mm. i had such a marvelous experience the first time that yeah. i didn't want to lose it yeah how can you top it I exactly yeah. Yeah. now this the other show that is one of my favorites was also in my hometown theater and it was godspell mm. and i never want to do that show again it was the most wonderful experience i've ever had in what? doing doing a show um I played um, John the Baptist and got to sing All Good Gifts oh, wow. in that show. And it was a just a remarkable show. Our theater in, in Conyers is called the Depot Players. Well, now it's called the New Depot Players. But at that time, the original group was the, the Depot Players. And it is a train depot. Mm. And it is the empty building. It's the railroad tie floor, and the walls are bare, and and it looks like a dungeon. So La Mancha, yeah. we were in the dungeon, and so yeah. at the end of the show, when they leave and go up, we went up into the loft. So oh, wow. it was perfect. Yeah, and it's just intimate theater. I mean, you were right on the the audience is is right there looking and sitting right almost in your lap for mm. the thing. So they can, it, they're, they're so close, they can see your eyelashes. Wow. That's, to me, they really get the experience of being it. And mm -hmm. um, Godspell has just such wonderful music. It's one of the most difficult shows to do because there's not a full script. You mm. get all the parables, and then you make up all the stuff in between to get to the next parable, which was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and I played... Um, an innkeeper in that one and got to make up this part about, you know, holiday in Jerusalem. How may I help you? You know, when, <laughs> when I answered that, that's right, exactly. Was, I was in, I was actually working for holiday Inn at that time. So that was, that's a moment that will always stick you yeah. know, kind of, you know, with me. But those are two that are still just very, very special. Um, music directing. Gosh, that's really hard. Did you, I've, I've had some just, um, I'm going to have to say that there's two of those. Okay. One was at Fort Gordon Dinner Theater, um, and that was 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Mm. Um, it was just an unbelievable cast, just a stellar cast that just walked in, and every one that we cast um, it, it's like it was written for them. It just worked yeah. so so well. Yeah, and and I I ended up doing kind of conducting with my head because I played the, the piano for that show. Mm -hmm. um, the 
I guess, biggest and one of the toughest shows for me, which also is one of my favorites, was conducting um, Les Mis. Mm. You know, when, when the Augusta players did that, um, just thinking, wow, uh, um, that small window yeah. of licensing the show opened up mm -hmm. and the players got it. And Debbie asked me to music direct and then it shut down where nobody else could get it again for a while. And um, it was, I mean, just a, a dream orchestra, a dream cast. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Willie Falk coming in, yeah. which um, Debbie didn't know Willie, but we knew, Kitty and I, my wife, knew Willie's agent. And we had worked with Willie in one show with the Augusta Opera, and we called the agent and said, is he free? And she said, yes. And we said, okay, we'll get you in touch with Debbie. And then that's how Willie started oh, coming wow. down, you know, for us. Um, uh, actually, I'm sorry, that is not, not the case. He came down for Miss Saigon. Mm -hmm. That's when he was the original Miss Saigon on Broadway. Yeah, the original Chris, um, right? Chris, yeah, yeah Miss, uh, Chris and Miss Saigon. Uh, but then he came back and did his first Valjean mm. with, with us. Um, sorry about that confusion there. But it's um, it, it was such a, a a very moving moving experience. But it's it is really kind of hard um, to choose. Yeah. I, I've done close to a hundred shows since I've been in Augusta. Wow! Um, and and some of that is I might have been a pianist or doing the synthesizer for the show, but most of it is musical directing. Mm -hmm. you know, a couple of times I've gotten an opportunity to to be in something. Um, which is a different kind of scared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have a bucket list show that, that you want to do? I have had a bucket list show okay. that I am now beyond the age to do okay. the, the role, um, unless we do a concert version. That then it, to me it does make a difference, mm -hmm. but um, uh, Sunday in the Park with George oh, wow. to do the role of George. Yeah, um, um, a while back I could have. Yeah, um, but now it would need to be George's grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so. a it's and that's and that's an amazing show. I, I love Stephen Sondheim as I God. have we have his as I have his books here on the desk here. Um, it w both named after that show, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> look, I made a hat and finishing yeah. the hat. Um, but it, this is something I've always found with uh, Sondheim shows. Those act ones are all star killers. Act twos, not so much. Right. You may have one banger in act two and there's a lot of wrap up and a lot of, Fix, trying to figure trying out how to, to end. How do, how, do, how do we, it's like we did all this in act one. How do we, how do we wrap this up now? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I love it. I love, uh, yeah, Me I, too. There's, there's, you know. It's, to many people, it's hard to hear. Mm. You know. It's very technically complex. It is. Musically. It is. And, and, and it's, it's hard to play. It's hard to sight read. Mm -hmm. It's hard to mm -hmm. sing without a lot of practice. Right. To us singers, though, mm -hmm. it's, we can't wait yeah. for it. But to because it's like gymnastics, right? To uh, to the normal person, I guess the average person, I guess I should say, who who aren't used to listening to that, it's not. It's not. Oh, let me sit down and listen to a Sondheim show, mm -hmm. where most of us theater singers, yeah, anytime. Let's just let's. A whole night, yeah. a whole weekend. Nobody right. goes to sleep. We just start from the beginning and, and right. sing and, you know, listen all the way through um, to many of them. And, there, and he's written so many just great tunes, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's uh, – uh, I, I mean, I think that, that show would be amazing. Mm -hmm. That show would be amazing for sure. Sure would. Um, so, Scott Seidel, if you're listening. <laughs> Just saying. Right. Um, or even a concert version. Right. Just saying. My baton's <laughs> in the hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so we've we've gone through 
<laughs> what brought you to Augusta and how you've stayed in theater. You've now retired. Yeah. You got a you got a little antsy and like I need something to do. And so that's where Tabs was born. No, Tabs wasn't born before that. Okay. Um I didn't leave the hotel business till 2019. Tabs, the Augusta Broadway Singers, was founded in 2013. That's true. Yeah. Right? So we are now 10 years old, mm -hmm. which was a dream. Um, never, I had always wanted my own group. You know, I was so afraid for, for many, many, many years to conduct. Um, when Debbie asked me to conduct Gypsy, which was my second show with the players, mm. uh, but it was my first one to conduct, I was petrified. I had no trouble learning music. I had no trouble teaching the music. I had none of that was mm -hmm. ever ever entered my mind. It was, what do I do with my arms? <laughs> I I I didn't. I wasn't going to have any trouble interpreting mm -hmm. or asking the the singers and stuff to to do certain things. But my mind was like down, left, right, up, down left, right, up. Mm. I had to tell myself what to do with my arms mm -hmm. and, and my hands. And and so um, I was a member, well, actually still am a member of St. John's United Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. and, and Jamie Garvey, who has been there as, as organist choir master for, for eons, um, I was singing there at that time and said, Jamie, what are you doing? Like tomorrow, whatever date, date it was. She said, well, I'm free. And I said, good, because I'm coming over. I'm bringing the score. I'm bringing the CD. And by the way, the CD that Bette Mittler came out with, that version of the show, mm -hmm. matches the score. So I said, and you're going to sit there and you're going to watch me conduct. So I walked into her office with my boom box and that CD and the stand and the thing and made her sit there, watch me conduct that show to mm -hmm. get through conducting it in, in front of somebody. This mm -hmm. was before rehearsals were ever going to start. Wow. And got over it. And yeah. then, then I realized it really doesn't make a difference. Yes, there are things that you need to do as a conductor, uh, certain patterns that, mm -hmm. that you need to learn and be able to do. But if your cast or your choir or your soloist understand what you want, it makes no difference. Yeah. Now, I might get calls. Mm -hmm. I might get emails <laughs> from from other conductors that go, oh, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go, oh, no, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But that's my, 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 yeah, my story on that. that. If I'm getting across mm -hmm. what I need out of the orchestra or out of the cast, mm -hmm. then I've done my purpose of right. what I need to do with it. Right. Um, but that's kind of how that started. So, tabs. Um I'd always wanted my own group, and uh, I just kept kind of going, I don't, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. And my wife and my daughter finally said, look, just get some of your theater people together and, and do some stuff. So mm -hmm. I did. I got 19, and you were one of those 19 original yep. TABS members. You yep. are a charter member <laughs> of TABS, and I'm glad of that, <laughs> um, together just to work on, and this was over the summer, in, in, in early June, because June 27th, 2013, was our very first rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And it was like four, I think we only had four pieces, but we were just going to get together and work on theater people, listening and blending and all, because we never get that opportunity yeah. when we are working on a show. Yeah. We get two weeks to learn all the music, to then go into staging and forget all the music. Yeah. And, and all that, they have to relearn it later and then forget it again and then relearn yeah. it once choreography is over, yep. et cetera, et cetera. So we were going to spend the time for for that to, to get used to thinking about what we're doing mm -hmm. chorally. Mm -hmm. And after about the third rehearsal, I'm like, we might have something mm -hmm. here. And from then it just kind of, you know, grew and... Uh, we did only have like five or six rehearsals, and that's when we we did have to stop because I was going into rehearsals with yeah. Les Mis. Yeah. And, and I mean, I remember that thinking, you know, this would be a great opportunity 
to stay in practice in between shows. For the folks that don't know, usually a theater company, especially if one like the Gusta Players that does 99% musicals uh, for the main stage, uh, you usually do four shows a year. So you every quarter you got a show. You're constantly you got kind of got a little bit longer break in the summer, but you you've, right. you've got a show going on, and you may not be cast or want to do whatever that next show is, but you might want to do the one following. Right. So you want to stay in practice. You you know it's kind of if you don't if you don't use it you lose it kind of thing with right. with voice and and movement and things like that. And yeah. so this was a great way to stay in practice. Mm-hmm with other people that have the same mindset, have, yeah. you know, the same kind of background of performing musical theater. It, 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 it is its own kind of weird community. In, it is. In, you know what I mean? As far as like, it's different than straight play. Our, our minds work different. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so it was such a great way to yeah. kind of stay in practice and to stay connected because every, you know, everybody goes through post-show blues, you know, it's like, Oh, when you, when the show's about to open and you're in tech week, you're like, I cannot wait till Sunday when this last show is over. Six and, o'clock. I'm waiting on six o'clock. And I don't have to do this anymore. Yep. And then like the Monday next, morning. Monday like, morning, you're like, I got nowhere to I go. I don't have anything to do tonight. You know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't have, you know, 12 pieces of music to listen through. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So it was such a great opportunity to just kind of, kind yeah. of stay in that mindset, stay sure. in that, uh, place and that's and that's kind of how it started and but years. i wanted it to be different too I, yeah. it was not you know i i love pretty much all kinds of music mm-hmm. um i appreciate all music um i'm not fans of some but i'm very classically trained a, mm-hmm. as a singer and plus i've done a lot of uh, of church work you know my entire life but, but I, I love classical music. I love requiems. I love um, art songs and, mm. and um, just pieces of choral music. I love choral music. Mm-hmm. I really do. But what I wanted the difference out of this was there are choral societies. There are show choirs. There, there are various groups like that. Mm. But we have that here. I, right. I didn't want that for, for us. I wanted, what what could we be this different? Well, my first love is musical theater. So, so that's our niche. That's what we're going to do. 99% nothing but mm-hmm. choral music of musical theater, mm-hmm. Broadway or off-Broadway or this type of thing, and and find arrangements, you know, you know for that. Mm-hmm. I might every once in a while throw in something from the golden age, or mm-hmm. I might throw, you know, find something, especially on the holiday show. There's only so much musical theater yeah. music that's been in a, uh, or holiday music that's been in a musical theater right. show or something like that. And so every year I don't want to do the, exactly the same, same show. I might choose a piece or two, you know, to carry on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I pick and choose, you know, a few things a little bit more openly in, in that concert mm-hmm. um, to, to make a variety of, you know, for the show. But um, it's strictly, I ca- we've kind of lab- labeled ourselves now as we're a theatrical ensemble. Yeah. And it's uh, built from 19 to, actually on our roster, we have 52, I think it is, or 54. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Depends on the moment. Right, right. <laughs> Comes and goes. Um and you know, and and again, I think it's that there there's such with with that many voices, and the fact that you've got you know in 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 the, we have tenors and altos and basses and sopranos tabs t a b s exactly you know and I didn't realize that at first. All I oh, thought you just I was, thought the Augusta Broadway the Augusta Broadway singers. Then one day I'm sitting there going, "Kate, look at this! This is tenors." Altos, surprise, yeah. surprise, she went, you just now figure that out? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but the the harmonies and some of the music that you pick, you know, everybody's like, oh, it's like a four-part harmony. There's some, we have some eight-part harmonies in some of these tunes that mm-hmm. is just gorgeous. And uh, the reaction I hear from people that have gone to the show is like, well, one, I didn't know that y'all were a thing. And oh, my God, the talent. Mm-hmm. It's like... It, it, so I always encourage folks to like, if you've, if, you know, if, if you sing and you're like, man, I wish I had a chance to sing, 
like, get with less and like audition and come be a part. Uh, um, Claire was a friend that I had mm-hmm. from, from working in retail. And she had mentioned about, I wish I had a place to sing. I was like, call there less, call less. And, uh, but it's just, it's such a great opportunity to, to perform and to be a part of something, you know, that's, that's larger than the sum of the parts, you know right. what I mean? It's just, it's just amazing. And I can't wait for the, for the holiday concert coming yeah, up on too. December 1st. Um, what's the next thing that you're, oh. you know, what's, where's 10 years in, you know, you're just getting warmed up. What's, uh, what's the trajectory? What's- I, 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 I want it to keep going. Um, I, every show, um, will, will be different. Uh, it, it may have a theme. It may have a special purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, and I've thought about this show for a long time. I do want, at some point, I want to do an anti-bullying mm. concert. Um, saying that things are okay. Yeah. We don't, why Why do we need that? What, the world is made up of, I don't know, how many different kind of people? Who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, and so what? <laughs> right. Yeah, there's a, there, there's a purpose and, and a place, yes, yeah. for, for everyone. And so, um, but, you know, throughout the, the last several years, there have been so many instances of, uh, of issues with that. And, mm-hmm. but I, I just never could find the right time. And the, the right time hasn't told me yet that, mm-hmm. that it was the right time to do that. And I haven't come across enough music yet with that in mind of saying, okay, now's the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do know um, my next concert after the holiday concert, uh, which is December 1st, by the way, <laughs> um, as you know, uh, I am starting back with just the women for the first time mm-hmm. in January of 24 for um, an all-woman's concert. We're going to celebrate... Uh, women of Tabs and the women of Broadway. This season, we're starting in, in our tenth season. We're a season of celebration, mm-hmm. so we're celebrating the holidays. We're celebrating uh, the women of Broadway, and then in October of um, 2024, we're going to celebrate um, Broadway blockbusters, mm. um, and that will be another event that I'm, I'm, I'm excited for. But the women's concert. I've been spending a lot of time um, while we're in the holiday show um, getting ready, uh, choosing music, and, and um, just uh, that's the part I love the most is just spending time just listening and going, yep, I'm going to do that. Well, I come up with 40 pieces, and I go, well, we can't do <laughs> Okay. It's a six hour show. So I go, oh, come on. Here, here, here. Do I just close my eyes and just right. put them in, in different stacks? Then so I know I go, I start pulling out one by one. And then I get, okay, now I'm to 38. Okay, now what? <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and so I, I, I do have to, so I'm going to go, okay, well, at least I've got that. So now I know for another, mm-hmm. n- another something to, to put in. Yeah. But this one, the thing that makes this one special to me is I'm not going to conduct this one. Mm. Um, it's all the women, um, or just women in, in, in the group, and um, Stacy Branch, who retired last year from Lakeside High School, mm-hmm. um, is going to conduct this show cool. and plan this this show uh, and prepare you know, this show. Um, it will be a complete female orchestra, yeah, and it will be done in International Women's Month. Nice. So in March of 20, uh, 2024, well, yeah, March 22nd, 2024 is when nice. that concert will be. And that one actually will be at the Harden Auditorium, the okay. Jabez Harden Auditorium. Mm-hmm. So I'm thrilled about that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, for you mm-hmm. right now in life, what's bringing you joy, Les? Music. Yeah. Always has. Yeah. Not always every day. Um, I've had people in the past say you know, they might hear me humming or something. So, blah, 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 aren't you in a good mood? 
<laughs> no, I'm not in a good mood. I'm, all, I'm, I'm, I'm singing two phrases over and over, two measures of music over and over and over in my head, trying to get it right. Right. It's, it's why I'm doing. But they, people just think when somebody's singing yeah. that they're they're yeah. just happy go lucky and stuff like that. You know, well, not always the case for for a musician, but um, I'm. I'm calm right now. I'm I'm I don't have the hotel stress, which just mm-hmm. comes with that kind of job. Yeah. Um, don't tell me that I don't have stress. I I, I do. Mm. It's just um, different. I've gone back to school. Oh wow. Um, I will graduate with a master's in May of 2024, and um, which I had always hated that I didn't go before and, mm-hmm. and get it, and I just thought. Three years ago, I took it slowly. I decided I'm only going to take a couple classes per mm-hmm. uh, quarter or per semester. And I'm here now at the end. And it deals also with a 501c3 nonprofit agency, which is what TABS is. So yeah. it just kind of worked out really well. It's yeah. it's a Master of Science degree in Performing Arts Leadership and Management, which wow. is sort of what I do. Yeah. And um, and I kind of always feel that way, whether I'm a church pianist, or whether I was when I was a church organist, when I'm, you know, with with tabs, when mm-hmm. I'm in, in my teaching, which is my major thing right now. I um, never could have been a school teacher, never. Right. I'd have been in jail by ten <laughs> o'clock on day one before, probably even before ten o'clock. It would probably I would have been taken away to jail during homeroom probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the first day. But um, I have wonderful students from young children up th- through adults and a piano and voice studio that, yeah. that I have. Um, and I've now, since these past four years, almost five, to see what some of my students are doing and things that they have won. Um, I mean, I have a Schuler winner. That, that happened, which is, you know, the high school mm-hmm. um, musical theater awards that where there's one female, one male chosen for the, the entire state. And I, she was one of my students that did not, and went to the nationals, but did not get that. I have three, possibly a fourth Governor's Honors recipient wow. that will get to go to Governor's Honors. Um, uh, and people say, well, wow, you must be a great teacher. Well, I don't know that it's me i guide yeah i it, it's not me i think maybe i have some choice of good words mm-hmm. but i instill in my students the desire to do good yeah and um and i don't just let them not mm-hmm. you know and when, when they come in with these slouch days i ain't got time for that i don't got a pity party sit in your chair and you have your own pity party i'll go do what i want to but right. um it's, I'm here to help because you want to do this. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not good at it. Well, like that, you're right. Yeah. But change mind frame. And, um, and I said, I get upset at you because I care and because I think you can do it. Mm-hmm. If I didn't think you could do it, I'd be going, okay, mom. I, I, I think maybe underwater basket weaving might <laughs> be like, better. You know? I'm going to just return this check yeah. to you. And- I'm not going to do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the second segment of the show where we talk more about mental health, um, it, depression, anxiety. Those are things I deal, deal with still. Um. And I feel like being able to have the conversation, especially now, it's it helps to lighten the load. It helps to ease the burden of feeling alone. You know, depression mm-hmm. wants to tell you that you're alone and that that, that no one else feels like you. Uh, and the more that we can bring this to light, the easier it is, I think, for people to feel like that they are not alone. So for you, how do you keep the darkness at bay? <clears throat> This is going to sound awful, but I really care by trying not to care. Mm. Now, that might not make a whole lot of sense, but I care about people and I care about what, 
how people are doing. And I, I guess from my work in the hotel business of being a manager in my last job was I had 115 employees mm-hmm. that, were, that were under me. Um, and that was just the last you know, hotel. And, mm-hmm. and, and I was in that business for 43 years. Um, you, you learn to shut off a lot of oh, wow. stuff mm-hmm. of um, when, when things get really harried, whether that business or whether something else. I mean, if, if someone got injured, um, I go into what I call, what I always say is I go into manager mode. It's like, mm-hmm. I, I know what to do. I know who to call. And, you know, I, I don't go, oh, my gosh, da, da, da. I think I'm a planner for, mm-hmm. for the most mm-hmm. part. I guess is really what I'm trying to say. I plan for emergency. So when that emergency happens, yeah, I'm not panicked. I just mm. go, okay, I, I do this, I do this, I do this. And then when that's over, if I need to panic, maybe. Right. <laughs> you know, right. but I, I, because if I'm the one that's supposed to be in charge. Mm-hmm. And I got 115, if we're going to talk that for a second, if I got 115 that see me panicked, yeah. imagine that blossom. Yeah. And um, I, I remember only one time in, in that business, out of all those years, I had one fire. Mm. There's nothing worse than worrying, is my hotel ever going to catch on fire? Mm. And I got a call one Sunday morning on a Sunday morning that I was going to fill in for the minister of music and direct the choir that time. Wow. And I get a call five minutes before and it's like, I have to go. That That's it. I mean, yeah. there there is no way. So I looked at somebody and said, anybody direct the choir? I said, I have an emergency at the hotel. I have to go. And somebody raised their hand and said, you're on. And then, and mm. so it left. But luckily it wasn't a, a major fire. But yeah. it was one that started in, in a small um, closet. And it immediately shut up. But it caused enough damage. It caused enough smoke in the kitchen to cause the Ansel system wow. to go off. So, mm. But it's just like, you know, you, you go handle what you've got to do and, and, and do all that. So, but personally, um, uh, I think because of my years of, of management experience, I let things bounce off. Yeah. And uh, I don't take, I take some things to heart, but not many things. Um, I fight for what I think I might can win. Mm. And I'm not going to waste my time if I, if I, it's like, I don't have that kind of energy anymore. Why? Why, right. why do I want to, to try to, to, to battle that? Um, but I'm in a very comfortable place yeah. right, right now. I, I've most all my life kind of have been. I've had such a phenomenal childhood. I had parents that, I never once heard them raise their voice to each other. Mm. And they said they never did behind their bedroom door. I believe it. If there was ever a perfect set of parents, it was Roland and Joyce Reagan. <laughs> I'll say that to my dying day. And um, somehow they taught three boys how to be responsible. And I, what? when I got married and had a child, I thought, how, how do I do that? Mm-hmm. And then it dawned on me. One day I think they allowed us as children I mean, small children to be involved in decision making. Small things. Yeah. And, and I mean, I think that's what started helping us dis- be able to make decisions and, mm-hmm. and, and try to do things responsibly. Might have only been about where to go on vacation. I don't know. But that's the only thing that ever could come to mind. You know? yeah. And um, it sounds like I, it I kind of set the groundwork for some of that planning that you like to do. Yeah, that, maybe. That, that, you know, that it's like, hey, Things have I, a, I don't like last minute. I am not last minute. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I might feel that a little mm-hmm. bit, but um, I mm, no, I'm 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 a planner. I, yeah. Let me just go pick it up two weeks from now. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Then, why do I do that? 
mm-hmm. <laughs> but I did it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't like, I, my brain doesn't move fast enough for last minute. Mm. No can, I think, maybe. Yeah, I mean, you know. In an emergency. Yeah, you know. Because I've already worked out the emergency. I was about to say, somebody (laughs) hits a siren out in the orchestra. I mean, that eyebrow goes up real quick. Or or the choir. Right, or the choir. (laughs) (laughs) That's right, or they put that tea on. (laughs) That's another whole little story, (laughs) y'all. All about teas. I hate teas. Teas in the middle of the words. (laughs) Yeah. I'll hear that. No matter what's one one person out of 50. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. but yeah, the, I, I, you know, I think that's, I think that's good, you know, that you've got a plan, quote unquote plan. So if those, if those days ever do come, mm-hmm. if the, if the days of doubt or you have a day that, you know, that you're sad or whatever, you, you've kind of made arrangements and you've been through that stuff and you, and you know how to like, get out of it. If it's a situation where, you know, I need to be sad for just a, just a little bit, I need to shed a tear or I need to, you know, do whatever introspective thought for a moment. And I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to move on to the next thing. I don't need to I stay do a it. lot of that. You know, when, when you, when you bring some of that up, um, I'll be the first one to say my mother passed away 30 years ago at age 61 the month before my son was born. Wow. The last word she said to me the week before she died was, give Kitty, Katie, and Patrick my love. She knew we were having a boy. She knew we'd named him. Um, I did not shed a tear mm. at Mother's funeral. I was doing the music. Mm. That was my way to say goodbye. I yeah. did the music for the, for the funeral. And my dad's, and one of my brother's, and... Uh, Right. I'm um, the go-to for, yeah, the you know, piano for, all, for all that. Right. right. Uh, but, and, and I think with us being performers, we go in and out of characters mm-hmm. of how to do, we have to do this, we have to do that, um, that I do that. I, I can't tell you how many funerals I've played or sung or how many um, weddings I've played. Mm-hmm. And so it's just, you just, you you go into that kind of mode and get, yeah. and, and so then if I need to cry, I'll cry later, I guess, if. Right. I just, I go into sort of that manager kind of mode. Yeah. I have a purpose. I've got a reason to do this. I've got to do this. I've got to do this. It, I don't think it's shunning anything. It's just to make sure that it all goes through right. Yeah. And um, uh, that's me. It's just it's the planner. It's just I go into that performance mode, mm. which is really kind of what I, I guess it really all boils down to. All right, bless. This is the third segment of the show. It's time now for the Fast Five. The Fast Five. It's time now for the Fast Five. Fast Five. Sorry, I'm still working on a theme song. I'm just workshopping that. I've got some people that have got some. Maybe I could, maybe could you write Let a little Let me know. Piano? We'll do some. We'll, we'll, we'll do, do some piano, lessons. Yeah, something, yeah. something on that? Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> the Fast Five <laughs> is powered by Poddex. It's an app created by my friend Travis Brown. Uh, they're great conversation starters. It was It's questions created for podcasters. But like I said, they're great. They're great conversation starters and icebreakers. Uh, you can get physical decks or you can download the app at your app store. Just search for Poddex. Or if you go to chewinafatbr.com slash pod decks and use promo code chew you get 10 percent off your physical decks but i'm going to use the app five questions first thing off the top of your head no wrong answers okay you ready question number one what is your favorite movie musical favorite movie musical oh my gosh um Probably Hello, Dolly. Okay. When I say that, I have no idea, but I do love the movie. But, well, but I well, see, it, it popped in your head. First that's, thing that popped in my that's head. That's what I said. That's the first thing that popped in your head, so there must be a reason. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got... Don't you know got, why, but it, there's a reason. Louis Armstrong's in it. Yeah. I mean, that's... 
You know, there's something going and on. And Streisand, there. one of the best singers in the world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Babs is in there, Babs. too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Question number two. All right. When it comes to snacks, sweet or salty? Oh, sweet. Really? Look at me. <laughs> Sweet. Well, look at me, but see, I'm more of a salty snack guy. I'm going to give me some popcorn or mm. some crackers. That's the chaser some, part. Okay. <laughs> awesome. All right, question number three. What do you love to do for others? What do I love to do for others? Like it just, you know, like, I want to do Put this. them on a pedestal. Really? Yeah. Hmm. That was my job. For 43 years, <laughs> was to put people on a pedestal. Okay. Okay. You can take whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> That's customer service to me, is yeah. that you walk in and I put them on a pedestal. You know, they, whatever their problems are, they're, they're coming to get away from something, okay. I think, you know, at, at times. And so there we give them an experience. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, question number four. If humans came with a warning label, what would yours say? <laughs> oh. Um. <laughs> you turn it real red over there. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of how I could say this, um, since this is going to go out on the air. <laughs> uh, but I, so yeah, I, 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 I mm -mm. Um, <laughs> let's see if I came with a warning label. Um, one that I <laughs> use a lot is um, squat and watch. Squat and watch. Okay, you you, know, you have to explain that a little bit to me. So. I do. Squat and watch. When somebody says that I can't do something, uh, I just squat and watch. Okay. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. All right. And question number five. What do you think is more important in a song, the melody or the lyrics? Oh. This will be interesting because you like musical theater, but you're also a musician. So it, it's always the lyrics. The lyrics. It's the story. Mm. However, this is part two of that. <laughs> okay. It's how you tell the story. Mm. That's what's most important. That you tell a story on those pitches. I mean, or just sing ah. <laughs> I mean, it might have a beautiful melody, mm -hmm. but if, and, and you've heard me say this in, in, in tabs, if the story doesn't get across the boards yeah. and out into to the audience, then all we need to sing is off. I think, and maybe that's what it is. As humans, we connect to the story. That's that's how we told our histories was through passing down of stories and things like that. And so right. a turn of phrase, whew, it can give me chills. It can give me chill bumps. But that story is so much better when that music is absolutely stunning. Yes, yes, 100%, <laughs> 100%. All right, Les, well, that is our Fast Five, and that's the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Absolutely. I know we've been trying to get together for a little while, I know, and right? I'm so glad it finally worked out. Me too. Uh, if folks want to keep up with you and Tabs, what's the best way that they can do that? Um, through Tabs. It's just tabsaugusta.com, and that's where they can buy tickets for our show in December mm -hmm. or find out about us just you know, through that. Um, they can actually check out my other website if they're looking for, you know, needing uh, lessons for themselves or mm -hmm. for a family member or, or someone else. And that's just at uh, lessreganmusic.com. Absolutely. I'll make sure that we put those uh, links in the show notes as well. What a great Christmas gift that would make is some sure some would. vocal or piano lessons uh, from Les. Or audition preparation. You know, I, I do not. I teach piano. I teach voice. But I also do audition preparation. It can be just for a lesson or two. Or even if someone's wanting to learn how to accompany someone, oh. I do actually teach a company. Awesome. And you can find out more about all that 
on the links on the website, uh, on the uh, show notes as well. Les, again, thank you so much for being here. I, I love you so much. I love what you do and your heart and the music that you bring to this community and to everybody that's around you. You are so kind. Thank you so much. And if you would like to support this podcast, I'd appreciate it if you bought me a coffee at chewingthefatbr.com or leave a rating or review. But until the next time, I look forward to the chance we have to sit a spell and chew the fat. Mm-hmm.